Well, here we go again. 2022 really has been a huge year for electric e-bikes. Earlier this year, Electric announced the XP Lite, a lighter, more portable e-bike that is almost 20 pounds lighter than their standard XP models. Shortly after that release, Electric put out their X Premium model, which broke new ground as a foldable dual battery e-bike with a mid-drive motor that redefined what a mid-drive e-bike could cost. Then in August, Electric introduced a long-range battery upgrade for their new and existing XP 1.0 and 2.0 owners, add in a much-needed larger battery option for their bikes. Now in November, Electric just revealed their much-anticipated latest update, replacing their XP 2.0 e-bike. A new XP 3.0 that builds upon the strong foundation laid by the 1.0 and 2.0, making improvements based on the feedback received from their customers. With these changes, the XP 3.0 is a contender for one of the best foldable economy e-bikes on the market. With some of these new updates, it may just complete some of the types of tasks you previously needed other e-bikes to accomplish. But before we jump into that, I just wanted to ask that if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and if you want to see more of my content, please subscribe to have more of my videos sent your way. Now let's get into the new electric XP 3.0 and see what it has to offer. Well, we're waiting. At first glance, the overall design of the 3.0 hasn't had any drastic changes, so it seems that electric is sticking to the mantra of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The XP 3.0 comes with many of the same components and features that came on the 2.0, two different frame options for high step or step through versions, metal front and rear fenders, basic front headlight and rear brake light, wire wrap cable management, a monochrome LCD display that shows you basic readouts like speedometer, odometer, battery graph, wattage, pedal assist levels, etc. And while the graphics and branding on the bikes have been updated, the color options remain the same. Black and white for their step through models, simply black for the high step version. The overall dimensions and size of the 3.0 and 2.0 are the exact same as well. They are both 67 inches long and have a standover height of either 18 and a half or 24 inches, depending on the frame style. The handlebar reach hasn't moved either, 18 and a half to 20 inches, depending on how you adjust it. And the recommended rider height on both versions remains unchanged as well. 410 to 65 for the high step or 410 to 63 for the step through version. The total payload capacity for the 3.0 is also the same, 330 pounds in total. Despite these similarities, there are several changes that are notable. Some of these revisions are subtle and some that are quite substantial. One of the most noticeable changes is the increased power and performance that the 3.0 has over its predecessors. The XP 3.0 still comes with the standard 500 watt rear geared hub motor that has been a staple since the XP 1.0 was released back in 2019. However, the 3.0's peak wattage has been increased to 1,000 watts. The 2.0 and 1.0 peaked at 850 and 800 watts, respectively. Electric says that the torque rating on the 3.0 motor comes in at 55 newton meters, while the 2.0 only had 35. The 3.0's controller has been upgraded as well. It tops out at 20 amps compared to the max current of 18 amps that came on the 2.0's controller. This doesn't necessarily mean you'll be getting any additional top speed out of the 3.0, both bikes are capped at either class 2, 20 miles per hour, or unlocked through the display into class 3 territory up to about 28 miles per hour. But this controller motor combo from the 3.0 would translate into a slight increase in overall acceleration and hill climbing ability. This added power will be useful if you're planning to use the more solid integrated rear rack that comes on the 3.0. Unlike older versions of the rack that were bolted on, this new beefier rack on the 3.0 is welded right to the frame and is able to carry double the amount of weight compared to the 2.0s. This really is a huge upgrade to the XP 3.0. This means that you would be able to carry the weight of an adult passenger on the back of a foldable e-bike, something really rare. Most other standard rear racks are able to carry anywhere from 50 to 70 pounds on average. If you needed a bike that could hold more, you would typically need to switch over to a utility or cargo e-bike to accommodate that kind of weight. Having the ability to carry a load of that size on a rear rack can be a game changer for a lot of riders. Since there are a growing number of people that are using e-bikes as car replacements, having a substantial rear rack makes the XP 3.0 that much more of an attractive option. Not to mention that many electric riders take their XPs along in an RV. This would mean that in some cases they would only need to purchase one bike instead of having to buy two separate e-bikes to travel around the various locations they're visiting giving them the option to save on money and on space. The downside to this new integrated rear rack, however, is that if you want to remove it for whatever reason, such as you don't like the look or want to reduce the overall weight of the bike, you're pretty much stuck with it. Unless you decide to do something drastic, 
like take an angle grinder to the frame to cut it off, so keep that in mind. The battery options for the 2.0 will carry over to the 3.0, however, the 3.0 standard battery is just slightly larger. You'll have the ability to purchase the 3.0 with the standard 48 volt 10.4 amp hour battery or the newer long range 14 amp hour option instead for an additional $200. Electric indicates that you'll get up to 45 miles of range on the standard capacity battery or up to 65 miles with the larger battery using pedal assist level one. However, in most cases, riders will get well below these numbers, probably closer to 25 to 35 miles per charge on average while pedaling. If you want to ride your e-bike as an electric moped, throttle only, you'll likely get closer to 15 to 20 miles max on the regular battery or 20 to 30 miles maximum on the long range one. The amount of range that you get out of any e-bike battery is one of those tricky things that will depend heavily on many factors, such as the terrain you're riding on, the weight on the bike, the amount of times you start and stop, the average speed you're traveling at, and even the tire PSI can all affect the amount of range that you get out of a battery charge. So I wouldn't take any of these range estimates as being set in stone. The Lord, the Lord Jehovah has given unto you these 15, Oi. 10, 10 commandments. The 3.0 still has the same suspension setup that the 2.0 came with. A hard tail or no suspension in the back and a front fork suspension up front. Electric is using the same oil suspension style in this go round with the same adjustment and lockout options. However, with the 3.0, they added 10 millimeters of extra bounce to the forks. The 2.0 came with a 40 millimeter travel fork and the 3.0 was upgraded to 50 millimeters of travel, meaning slightly more shock absorption and a smoother ride. Another component that was given an upgrade was the front and rear brake rotors. The brake components themselves appear to be the same, both mechanical two-piston unbranded Tektro brakes. However, Electric upgraded the rotors from 160 millimeters found on the 1.0 and the 2.0 to the 180 millimeters found on the 3.0. Larger rotors should translate into more stopping power and efficiency while braking, which will really come in handy if you're carrying a passenger. 180 millimeter rotors are the default size for e-bikes in this class, so I'm glad that Electric decided to make this change. Another subtle upgrade that you may not notice at first is the upgraded handlebar grips. Just like the previous versions, the 3.0 has rubber friction comfort grips. However, Electric went with a softer and seemingly more comfortable rubber type with the 3.0s. So your hands should feel better and less fatigued on longer rides. I would like to have seen locking grips so you don't have to deal with grip twist, but it's a nice upgrade nonetheless. Another rider comfort change that Electric has made was the main saddle. The 3.0 is coming with what appears to be a more firm, low profile seat when compared to the vinyl one that came standard on the 2.0. Seating comfort is highly personalized, so I won't begin to speculate which is more comfortable to everyone. I'll leave that up to you to decide. But for the most part, the seats that come on e-bikes in this price range are almost certainly expected to be replaced or upgraded to something better. Heck, even for bikes costing twice as much. So I wouldn't get too hung up with what seat the bike comes with. One component that is often overlooked but can make the world of difference on a ride is the free wheel gear ratio. A common complaint that electric owners as well as many other e-bike riders have is that at higher speeds, ghost pedaling becomes a big problem. To try to fix this, electric changed out the 7 speed 14 to 28 tooth free wheel that came on the XP 2.0 and put on a 11 to 28 tooth one instead. This means as you reach and pass 20 miles per hour, you won't be simply spinning your legs like crazy for no reason and you'll actually be inputting more power into your pedal strokes. I've run into this issue on my own bikes and it can be one of those major annoyances. So this change is good news for riders who like to pedal, trying to get more exercise and or range from their rides. The tires on the 3.0 have undergone a slight change when compared to the 2.0. While both come with 20 inch by three inch fat tires with knobby slash all-terrain style tread, which is good for most any types of roads or trails that you'll be riding on. Electric decided to add in tire slime as a standard feature in the 3.0's inner tubes, which is a nice little add-on. I, like probably most of you, really hate getting flat tires, so much so that I made a whole video that details how to prevent flat tires. So I definitely applaud Electric for putting slime into their tubes right out of the box. No word yet as to if the replacement inner tubes that they sell will now come with slime pre-installed as well, or if it's just the tubes that come with your bike out of the box. A totally new feature that was added with the 3.0 is the passenger mode. While using this optional riding mode, the bike will reduce its top speed to a safe 10 miles per hour limit. The added weight of a passenger on any bike shifts the center of mass, which can make riding with an adult passenger on the rear fairly unbalanced. And the faster you travel, the more this awkward weight distribution takes effect. So using this mode can make riding with a passenger much more safe and secure. 
However, you have to set this mode yourself, manually limiting yourself to a 10 miles per hour speed. So while I feel it's a good feature, I have a feeling that quite a few riders will feel it's a bit slow and won't be using it in everyday scenarios. But that's just my assumption. Now get into the feature that many will consider the most important, the cost. With the drastic spike in inflation, continuing rise in production and shipping costs, and a myriad of other reasons, Electric would really be totally justified in raising the cost of the XP in this release. However, Electric decided to keep the price exactly the same. The XP 3.0 with the standard battery is priced at $9.99. If you're looking to get one with the long range battery included, it's available for $200 more at $11.99. I definitely recommend picking up yourself the long range version and saving yourself a bit of range anxiety. When speaking of price, I try to make it a point to mention any additional costs that may raise this base price since it's rare that you'll ever buy a bike and not have to pick up at least a few accessories to go with it. Various upgrades and add-ons are available for the XP 3.0, most notably the package that comes bundled with a passenger seat for the rear rack, as well as foot pegs and a passenger handlebar, so your passenger doesn't have to hold on to you for stability. This is currently priced at $75 on sale at the time of me recording this, but its regular price is at $99. Also, since the bike is a hardtail, many would opt to buy a more comfortable seat and or suspension seat post to help with those bumpy roads. Electric has their comfort package options available for around $100, but I'd recommend picking up something like a Cloud9 seat and a cheap suspension seat post off of Amazon. Buying both of these would probably cost you less than the Electric Comfort Bundle. If you are going to be primarily using the rear rack for a passenger seat, I'd recommend looking into some other type of on-bike storage, like a front rack or basket. Either can be picked up for $50 or $60 each from the electric store. Other than those add-ons, there really isn't anything that I would say I would recommend or is a required purchase for the XP 3.0 right out of the box. All in all, I think Electric has really made some great improvements on their already successful flagship XP bike. With the added motor power and the new long range battery option added, they really tried to fix some of the weaker points that perhaps led some potential buyers to look at other options. And when you also factor in the improved rear rack, front suspension, and pedal gear ratio, you have a strong contender for the best value in the economy e-bike market today. There really isn't much of anything that I would point to and say that I would have expected to be improved given the price point that this bike is coming in on. If you're looking for an affordable folding e-bike, the XP 3.0 is a great option. If you're looking for a class 3 capable pedal and exercise or commuter e-bike, the XP 3.0 would fit. And if you're looking for a utility e-bike able to carry the weight of an adult passenger or equivalent, you could make the 3.0 work for that as well. The 3.0 has moved the electric XP into the one size fits all kind of area. But as always, these are my own opinions and I'm not getting paid by electric for saying any of it. I'm not partnered with them in any way and I don't even have an affiliate link to share if you wanted to buy one. I do, however, hope that you enjoyed this video and it possibly helped you in choosing the right e-bike. If it did, please click the like button, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment. It would be most appreciated. Otherwise, I thank you for watching and stay safe.